So in this video we're going to use special angles to find the exact values of trigonometric functions. So for our first example we want to find the exact value for the sine of 5 pi over 4. There's no degree symbol on it so then we know that we're talking about radians. And the idea is to find the reference angle and use the reference angle to generate the exact value for the sine of 5 pi over 4 radians. And the nice thing about radian measure if we're working with special angles that have been obtained by reflecting the core special angles that we've developed over the x and the y axes, then the reference angle smacks us in the face. It's always going to be the pi over the denominator which is either going to be a 3, a 4, or a 6 if we're basing it off of our standard special angles. So this is telling me that my reference angle is pi over 4 in quadrant 1. Here's my reference angle. And now I want to identify the quadrant that I'm in. So I have the angle 5 pi over 4. I know that 4 pi over 4 is pi radians. So that's a 180 degree revolution in standard form. So 5 pi over 4 goes 1 pi over 4 past that. So a, a 45 degree angle past 180 degree mark. In other words, five pi, I, I can think of 5 pi over 4 as being 4 pi over 4, which is 180 degrees, plus pi over 4, which is another 45 degrees. So 180 degrees plus another 45 degrees is going to put me down at this point right here. So this angle is my angle 5 pi over 4 radians. My reference angle is pi over 4 radians corresponding to the 45 degree or pi over 4 radian angle in quadrant 1. And then all we do to generate our values for sine is we reflect this point across the x-axis over to here so we get hey this is negative root 2 over 2 root 2 over 2 and then to get it to position we have to reflect it then down into quadrant 3 which is going to put it at negative root 2 over 2 comma negative root 2 over 2 so there's our x and our y coordinates in quadrant 3 corresponding to our 5 pi over 4 radian angle so I used the special angle to get the coordinates here. I could also have just thought about reflecting this point through the origin to that point directly, which is the same as 180 degree rotation. The idea is, is I need to use my reference angle in quadrant one to generate the appropriate coordinates in the quadrant I'm interested in, which is quadrant three corresponding to five pi over four. And then I just use, I just use the fact that on the unit circle, the sine is just the y-coordinate. So here I have the y-coordinate staring at me. So the sine of 5 pi over 4 is just going to be negative square root of 2 over 2. So for tangent of negative pi over 3, we can kind of play the same game. So let me get clean up this mess a little bit, get that stuff out of my way. So the reference angle it's going to be pi over 3. My reference angle in quadrant 1 is pi over 3. And then negative pi over 3, I want to recognize that as a, a clockwise rotation. So all I need to do, so here's my pi over 3 rotation. I just need to re, uh, reflect this point down into quadrant 4. And now I have a negative pi over 3 rotation into quadrant 4 and then I come up here and I say what are what ordered pairs am I going to have so I'm using I'm using my special angles in quadrant 1 that we already developed in a previous video now I reflect like we did in a previous video uh, reflect down into quadrant 4 that's going to make the y coordinate negative and then the tangent function this is my negative pi over 3 angle, and my tangent function is going to be the y coordinate divided by the x coordinate. Those are going to give us a 1, so we're going to get negative square root of 3 
going to get numerator over numerator, which is just negative square root of 3. So this time we're going to work in degree measure. So 240 degrees is going to be an angle between 180 degrees and 270. So what we want to do, 240 degrees lives somewhere in here. What we want to do is find the reference angle. Where What's the reference angle for this? So the reference angle, because I'm in quadrant 3, I'm going to take my 240 degrees and I'm going to ask the question, how much past 180 degrees am I? And if we do the subtraction, we're going to get 60 degrees. So we're 60 degrees past 100, the 180 degree mark. So that's going to put us at this point right here. 60 degrees is my reference angle. I'm 60 degrees past 180 when I'm at 240. So again, I go to my 60 degree angle in quadrant one. I'm going to reflect it over the X and then over the Y. And I'm going to recognize that in quadrant three, the X coordinate is going to have to be negative. And the Y coordinate is also going to need to be negative. And now I use the fact that on the unit circle, the cosine is just the X coordinate. So I see that the cosine of 240 degrees is just going to be negative one half. So for the tangent of negative 225 degrees, we'll play the same game. So this one's going to be, I'm going to play this one slightly differently. What I'm going to do is say, hey, I want to find a coterminal angle with negative 225 degrees. A coterminal angle that's between zero degrees and 360 degrees. And to do that, we're going to take the negative 225 degrees and we're going to rotate it a full 360 degrees to get a coterminal angle. So that's going to be 360 minus the 225. It's going to give us 135 degrees. And then I want to recognize that 135 degrees is between 90 degrees and 180 degrees. So to get my reference angle, I'm going to do 180 degrees minus 135 degrees. So we're going to go 180 degrees minus the 135 degrees, which is going to equal a 45 degree reference angle. So I know that I'm 45 degrees short of the 180 mark. So that's going to put me right here. This is my 135 degree angle with my 45 degree reference angle. And so I see that I just need to step over here to 45 degrees. My reference angle in quadrant one, I need to reflect it over the Y axis. When I do that, I see that the X coordinate is going to turn out to be negative, negative root two over two. But the Y coordinate is going to stay positive in quadrant two. And now I'm ready to determine the value of my tangent function. My tangent function is going to equal my Y coordinate, which is square root of two over two, divided by my X coordinate, which is negative square root of two over two. And this is going to give me a negative one for my tangent function. So we'll do two more examples. Again, here's cosine of 17 pi over 6. I can see that my reference angle is going to be pi over 6, or 30 degree angle in quadrant 1. That's my reference angle. Theta r is pi over 6. This angle is not an angle between 0 and 2 pi radians, or 0 and 360 degrees. So one way to do this is to get an angle that is coterminal with 17 pi over six, but that is between zero and two pi, so that it's easy to tell which quadrant we're in. So what I'm gonna do is take 17 pi over six, and I can see that I've rotated well past two pi radians, so I'm going to subtract two pi radians off to get a coterminal angle. Multiply by 6 over 6 to get the common denominator. We're going to have 17 pi minus 12 pi all over 6 is going to be 5 pi over 6. I know that 6 pi over 6 would be pi radians, so I'm just short of 
180 degree rotation at 5 pi over 6. In fact, I am 30 degrees short of that. So 5 pi over 6 right here, which is coterminal with 17 pi over 6. I can use 5 pi over 6 to find my trigonometric values. I see that my reference angle is pi over 6, so I take and reflect over the y-axis. I get my ordered pair. The x-coordinate will be negative, so we get negative square root of 3 over 2, but the y-coordinate is going to remain positive. So the cosine of 17 pi over 6 is going to be just the x-coordinate on the unit circle. And so final example, here's the cotangent function. We have a negative rotation. That's well more than 360 degrees. So we're going to find a coterminal angle to make it easier to think about. So we're going to say, hey, let's take 1,050 degrees, negative 1,050 degrees, and add, let's do We want to do three, maybe three times. No, two times. Let's do three times 360 and see where that gets us. So we'll grab in the calculator because I'm lazy. So negative 1050 plus, we've got three times 360. That's going to give us 30 degrees. So 30 degrees is coterminal with negative 1,050 degrees. So this one's a little bit easier. We have a 30 degree angle here being coterminal with the angle we're interested in finding the cotangent value for. So because they are coterminal angles, that tells us that the cotangent of negative 1050 degrees is going to be the same as the cotangent of its coterminal angle, the angle that ends in the same place. And the cotangent is going to be the ratio of the x-coordinate, because it's the reciprocal of the tangent function, re uh, ratio of the x-coordinate, root 3 over 2, to the y-coordinate, which is one half. The denominators when we divide them will give us one. So we're going to wind up with numerator over numerator equaling the square root of three.